All right, let's go dirty together. Not that dirty what you have in mind right now. I mean dirty and dusty here on this little robot. And for that we can use here another material. Let's make a bit of space here. Copy paste. Yeah, come on. Yes, now we have it. And we can call this one dirt. Dirt, yeah, dirty. Rawr. We need the merge node, multi channel merge, yes, Arnold, please. And wire it up. Come on, not so slow, please. Yes. And come on, please. <laughs> it's actually a very good start here. Okay, so now, and we need a paint node. Come on. Yeah, it's loading everything here into it. Let's wait. Here we go. Um, we don't start with a paint node because we want to mask it out with the ambient occlusion. And I will show you here two ways how you can import some actual data which comes from another bake engine as an example. And you have two options. And option one is here under the object. You have here this little drop down called geo channels. And geo channels are basically a container for data. And to load some data in, we can click here on this I button. Uh, navigate to our folder, which is on my desktop. Here, the Mari robot, textures, and bakes. And then we can simply choose here the AO. Your utility raw because we want the raw data and import patches. So now we have it here in the geo channel, which we can rename to AO. And if we drop here a node called geo channel and look through by pressing to on the keyboard, you can see nothing is in here, but we can now choose here the AO. And here we have the data. So the cool thing about geo channels is we have one place where we can replace the data or the maps and it will update everywhere in the node graph. But there is another option where we can import some data and that's by pressing P on the keyboard. 4K, yes, okay, scalar and auto saving. Oh no, it's a slow one. Sometimes it's super fast and sometimes it's slow. Why is it so slow today? In the meantime, you can see I opened here some reference images. You can find this reference, which I gathered from the internet in the project files as well. And I highly re recommend to use uh, reference images. I haven't started with the reference images here because I had a bit of an idea what I want to go, but when you start um, replicating some details, you definitely should work with reference images. It's super handy to have some reference on your side and to see how it how it's actually distributed, how it's broken up and stuff like that. Okay, now it's done, cool. So now here on the paint node, we can go for right click, file, import, and import it here into the paint node. You can do that with textures, um, whatever you like. You can also import here some wood textures, whatever. <laughs> we can look through it and it looks the exact same. So the difference is the paint node approach is a bit lighter to calculate for the GPU. While here the geo channel refer is referencing here to the um, location where we have loaded it in, but it's a bit more flexible. So if you maybe have the, the case where the AO bake will change, then I definitely recommend you use the geo channel because you just have to replace it there and it will update everywhere. While on the paint node approach, you have to go on every paint node and do a right click and import it again. So you have these two options. For now, I think we can go for the geo channel. 
just because we can. And delete. I mean, it's up to you. You can um, go through the tutorial with the paint node as well. That's not a problem. So now we want to create a mask for our dirt. And the dirt is most of the time collected a bit in the, in the occluded area. And here that's displayed in black. We can invert the mask just that it makes a bit more sense. So now wherever it's white, there will be some dirt collected. We can also insert here a levels node to grade it a bit to, uh, to a point to which we like by playing around here on the midpoint. Okay, so now a merge node to break it up with some texture madness. Hmm, which one could work? I mean, we can try this one, why not? And here, switch to overlay. And let's see what we are getting here. I think we can crunch it a bit. Levels. I really like the levels node, it's just so handy. You could do the same with a, with a grade node or with the brightness lookup node, which is basically a, a curve, which you maybe know from uh, Photoshop. Let's switch here to clamp the output and crunch it. I think we can tile it a few times, maybe three. Mm, why not? It doesn't look too bad to me. Ah, really, really nice how it breaks it up here. I think we can crunch it even a bit more. So dust and dirt doesn't need to have a super hard edge. It can fade out a bit. It's like some some dust which is slowly fading out. If you will do some rust like here, you definitely need a hard edge like like this one here, then you, you need a hard edge, but we are doing some, some dust dirty stuff, so that's, that's fine with a bit fading. So we can make it a bit more uneven with add another merge node and insert a cloud. It's actually a uh, noise, hook it up here as well. Go for overlay and adjust here a bit the size. We can crunch this one here as well. You can also put the noise here in front of our texture, which gives you a slight different result. It's up to you. You can play around as much as you like. Now we can see it gets a bit stronger here, while here we are losing a bit of, of dirt. We can also adjust the size a bit, just to, to break up a bit the uh, procedural look and get a bit more unnatural feeling here. Adjust it here. And hook it up to see what we are getting. Yeah, come on, go. And in the mask and press one on the keyboard to view our shader. And that's where we are. Let's color here um, the dirt that we can actually see a bit better what we are doing. I like to tint it into a red because I don't have that much red assets so it's a bit easier to see you can choose whatever you like you can also go for pink that doesn't look too bad to me maybe here it's a bit yeah procedural like we can break this up very easily adding another merge node here and a paint node with an alpha of, of zero hook it up here not into the base, that's the wrong one. We need to over it here. And you can leave it at o as normal because it has an alpha of zero, it will do nothing. So you can see it's still the same. 
then we can go for our nice organic brushes here the t-rex one it's actually a super dope brush here and we can decrease it here a bit with a black color here on the side bake here on the fingers as well it doesn't make too much of sense I always start procedural with such masks, then I add some hand-painted uh, breakups on top of that, on areas which it makes sense. So we have the fingers a bit more clean, because he's using his fingers all the time, so there it won't collect that much of dust and dirt. Maybe dirt if he's working in the garden and he's gardening for you, then yeah, of course, there will be some dirt, but that's another case, which we don't have here. I really like how it looks so far. So let's add a backdrop, call it dirt, organize it a bit here. As I like to say, I want to hold my mask data over the merge, merge node. And now we can start tweaking here our dust and dirt. So let's have a look for a nice color. I think something brownish. Not that super saturated, just a bit here. Oh, you can't move it. Let's have a look here. Yeah, maybe we can go a bit more on the brightness here, just to have it as a subtle effect here. And dust and dirt is most of the time more rough. Maybe something like that. Now we can see how it breaks up here, the reflections, which is actually pretty cool. Yeah, I really like how it looks like here. So for the bump we want to have it actually following our surface so we can simply delete it so it will follow then the bump which is underneath it's barely visible here but it, it will do it we can also mix no let's let's leave it as it is so we don't have to go super crazy here i think we can decrease it here a bit don't like it that much how it's collected here. Just decrease it a tiny bit. I mean, that's, that's anyway, again, here's such a case where you can spend as much time as you like to bring it even further. But I think you're not interested in see me, seeing me here painting for hours and hours. I'm here to uh, teaching you the tool and some techniques and it's up to you to refine it on your end and integrate it into your workflow which makes sense for you that's just how i'm doing it here it's actually pretty cool so far you can also use an, a texture as an input it's actually possible some rust textures work very well for that you can grade it to a level which you like the color and saturation and stuff like that. But yeah, that was the dirt tutorial. On the next one, we will start with some hero, hero breakups and hero paintings. So see you then. Bye bye.